Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. So, my Darkbox gear motors are finally in stock and ready to sell. They were before BattleBots, but I had to take care of BattleBots things. I'm finally showing these off now. And today's video, I want to show how you can replace the shaft on one of these with a replacement shaft because the shafts on these small gearboxes, not specifically mine, but any 22mm gearbox that has a 4mm shaft especially, is probably the single most likely thing to break. So I wanted to offer replacement shafts so that you don't have to spend $35 or more on a new gearbox and motor together if only the shaft is the only thing that's broken. It's really not that hard to change out, you only need a couple tools, and I'll show the whole process here right now. For the sake of this video, I'm going to actually be practicing on one of the high reduction samples that I got. So this actually has the old style motor that I don't sell, and this gearbox has a ring gear that's been milled but not painted, so it looks slightly different, but the process is identical, and everything internally, other than the shaft being short, is identical to the ones that you will be working with if you have one of my high reduction gearboxes, or the HR. So, this is the high reduction shaft. It has three pins on the back of the carrier plate. The drive shafts that actually look a little bit different, I'll show one now. This is what the shaft for the drive gearbox looks like. It's a little bit different. You need to make sure whoop, that you don't use the wrong replacement shaft. Also note, when you if you're doing the drive shaft, it's the same process, but keep note here, the pins, three of them have little nubs on them, and three of them do not. I just took one of the drive gearboxes apart, and it looks like you want to put the gears on the nubbed pins, but double check with your exact gearbox. Take the gears off, put them back onto the nubbed ones with the replacement shaft. The spacing between these is not identical. You can see these are closer to the edge than these are. Let's get started here. So, for the sake of demonstration, I have taken out three of the four screws at the face of this motor already, but you will want to take out all four. That requires a PH1 screwdriver bit. So, pretty quick and easy if you have an electronic screwdriver like I'm using, but super unnecessary. And you're gonna probably want a magnet tray to keep all of the screws in, make sure you don't lose any. Now, the ones that you will have in yours have pre-applied Loctite, but if you're disassembling the gearbox, it's usually a good idea to replace that Loctite when you reassemble it. So, I'm gonna keep everything together except taking off the very front carrier plate, and you'll see maybe some or all of the planet gears will come out with it. That's okay. To get the rest of them out, we can actually use one of the screws we just used, or we just got from disassembling the motor to get inside the bore of the gear. Whoops, sorry. That's not focusing. Use one of the screws to get inside the bore of the gear. And you can carefully kind of coax it out of there. So, we are going to want to now keep those planet gears separate, but do not lose them. Might be a good idea to put them on the magnet tray if you have it. I'm leaving them out just because I'm doing this as a video. Now, what you're going to need to do is set this aside, take a look at the back here, and you'll see there's the three nubs where the gears used to go. On the front side, you've got this thing here, which is called an E-clip. Now to get that out, the easiest way is to use a flathead screwdriver. You need to be very careful that you don't lose this clip though, because I don't sell replacements currently. Maybe I will at some point in the future. And make sure you pry it down towards the table. And I have a magnetic screwdriver, so it came out and just stuck to the screwdriver. Make sure not to lose that. And now the shaft should be able to just push straight through and come out. And there's this little spacer on top that we also want to save. There's a spacer on the top, spacer on the bottom. Those should be identical, it doesn't really matter which is which. And then we've got the actual um, front plate of the motor with the bushing pressed into it. So this is the old shaft, I'm gonna set that aside. Here's the new shaft. I'm simply going to take that rear spacer, put it on the new shaft like so. And that does not want to focus. So I've got the spacer on there, then 
put this guy on here so this, the uh, recesses for screws are facing outwards. Then we put on the final spacer. Followed, of course, by the E-clip again. Now to get the clip on can be a little bit tricky, but you kind of just need to line it up. And I found that the easiest way to do this might be if you have a sharp table edge. You can kind of just do this. Now we've got this fully assembled and ready to rock. So we're just gonna shove those planet gears back on there. The trickiest part of this assembly process is going to be to get all the gears to mesh with the ring gear and the sun gear inside of the gearbox when we're putting it back together. No need to regreet the no need to regrease this or anything. And now, very carefully, I am going to Insert this here very lightly. You might need to shimmy the shaft a little bit to get it to align properly with the sun gear in the middle of the carrier plate. Try this again this time with this upside down. There we go. So now it went all back together. And now we just need to make sure all the holes line up the way that they should and we can put the screws back in. So I'll start with one screw. Goes through there, all the way through the ring gear and into the mount plate. And then I'm just gonna screw it in, but not tighten it just yet. That's actually the flathead. And then what I'm going to do is Get some Loctite. I have this little tray that I've smeared with Loctite. I'm gonna get Loctite on the screw, put it in. All the screws are in there, but not tightened yet. I've only done this like twice, so if you actually do this more than a couple times, you'll probably be faster at it than I am, but still, this is like a less than 10 minute process. So there we go. And it's good to make sure that the shaft still turns with those three, the uh, three stage ones. It's kind of hard to turn by hand, but you can usually turn it with like a wrench or something. But of course you just power up the motor and make sure it doesn't stall. That's an easy way to do it. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it bangs up or not. Nope, it's perfectly good to go. Means that the process was a success. So now you have a brand new shaft on your Darkbox gear motor. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope to get back to more normal videos in the coming weeks since I am gonna be recovering from BattleBots and I've got a lot planned for next year. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe if you like this video and want to see more like it. And as always, thanks for watching.